When I'm learning how to code in a new programming language or new technology, one of my favorite things to do before I read any documentation, before I take any tutorials or really sit down and learn how to do it, is just to write a program in the language. Get a feel for what it looks like. And even when you're just starting out, this is a great way to get engaged with programming and understand what it's all about. It's really pretty straightforward to do. Writing your first program is easy. Pick a language, pick a goal, and start typing. Let's talk about that second item right there. Pick a goal. Let's establish ourselves a goal for the program that we want to write inside of this video. I've come up with three simple straightforward steps that we can, uh, we can do in just about any programming language. We will ask the user, the person using the computer, for their name. They'll type it in. We'll store that answer in memory. And then we will write a message back to the user and we'll include the stored name in that message. And like I said, you can do this in almost any programming language that is out there. Uh, Perl, Kotlin, PHP, Python, .NET, C Sharp, whatever you're using, you're going to be able to accomplish that. So I'll show you a few different ways to do that in a few different programming languages inside of this video. Why don't we start with using a fiddle? If you recall from my earlier video, a fiddle is just a website that lets you fiddle or mess around with a programming language and see the results, see the output of the code that you write right there inside of the browser window. I'm here at one onlinegdb.com that has an online C compiler. I just searched it up in the search engine and this is the one that came up. So it even starts with a simple C program already typed in. This upper area here, the black area, is known as the program, and it, it represents a text file with our source code in it. If I click the Run button, notice that it uh, prints out down here, Hello World, which is exactly all this program does. It prints Hello World down into the screen, and then it says press Enter to exit. Well, we want to do a few more things. Recall that our steps are to ask the user for their name. So follow along with me. Open up this website, get your browser open, and start typing in exactly what I type in in the exact spaces that I type them in. Here above the printf command, I'm going to type char space name open bracket, and we'll say 25 close bracket semicolon. Still following along? I've typed two more lines now in 15 and 16 there. You can see it's printf, hello user, what is your name, and then scan f and that percent s inside of those quotation marks. Make sure you are following along exactly with me. Copy the code exactly as I'm writing it. It's very, very important. Okay, and then lastly, I changed that final printf statement to say welcome, percent s, to our first program. And then I put comma name after that. Now, you don't need to understand what's going on here. I don't expect you to look at this and, and understand it. Here should be your takeaway from this. Notice, first of all, that it's very, very structured. Um, every time there's some kind of open bracket or open parenthesis, there is a closing one to match it, either right away, like you see after the word main right there, or, for instance, here's an open curly brace. There's a closing curly brace right there. And then notice that there are multiple lines in between this open and closing curly brace, and they are slightly indented so that they're all lined up. Notice that some of the words are legible, print F. Uh, you may not know what that means, but you can take a guess what print means. It's going to print something out onto the screen. Main, include, name, these are all words that you recognize, even if you don't understand what the code does. And that's because this is a high-level programming language. Know what needs to happen with high-level programming languages? That's right, they need to be compiled. They need to be baked into machine language. And when I click Run, watch the bottom of the screen. See compiling program right there? Yeah, when I click run, this fiddle is compiling that program into machine code, and now it's executing it, and it's running it, and this little black window on the bottom is the terminal. It's showing me the output from the program. So what is my name? Well, my name is Ben. I'm going to type that in. Hit enter. Welcome, Ben, to our first program. Boom. That's it. We, we were done. We have uh, 22 lines of code, and really the top seven lines don't count. They're not really important. So we have something more like 15 lines of code to ask me what my name is and then print it back out. It seems like a lot, but it's actually not all that much. And I would, at this point, take a moment to just pause the video and mess around with this code a little bit. Change some things. See what else you could do. Maybe ask the user for their name a second time and see what happens. Change the output message. See how you can play with it without actually breaking it or causing an error. I think you'll find that it's pretty interesting. Recall that we can perform this same task in a lot of different programming languages. Why don't we take a look at it in Python? I'm going to come over here to python.org, and from the downloads, uh, pull down on this website. I'm going to download Python 3.7.2. It's just an executable. All I have to do is run this, and this will launch the Python interpreter 
in my system, in my Windows system, lickety split. It's easy to do, it doesn't cause any trouble, and it's going to allow us to write Python right away on our Windows machine. If you happen to be running on Mac OS, this is actually already done for you, with Python 2 at least, and I'll show you how you can use that in just a moment. Once it's complete, I can simply click Close, open up a command line window, I'm in my user's documents folder, and if I type Python, well, dash dash version, yeah, Python 3.7.2. Now I'm going to open up a notepad document, and I'm going to type in the code, the Python code, for our program. Now, typically, you would want to use something more robust, something like Notepad++ or, or Sublime, or even a visual IDE editor to do your code, but I really want to demonstrate how simple it is to use, or how simple it is to do this, with nothing more than just the Python interpreter downloaded. So here is my code, and notice that it looks different than the C code. Every programming language looks different. Some are more complicated than others, but they're generally going to share some traits. Like, again, we see a lot of these open and closed parentheses. We see the percent symbols. Everything here is very particular and very important. The structure is really, really important. If you are typing this in on your screen, following along, ensure that you type it in exactly the way you see it here. Now, with that done, I've saved it into my Documents folder, so I can call Python space uh, sample.py is what I named the file. When I execute this, hello user, what is your name? Uh, ben. Hello Ben, welcome to our first program. Perfect. So we ran this in Python as well. Now if you happen to be on Macintosh, like I said, it's even easier. And you can do the same thing that we just did, but you don't have to download and install Python. Python 2.7 is actually already installed. If I load up uh, iTerm in this case, I can type Python dash dash version, and I see Python 2.7.7. That comes preloaded in Macintosh, so I don't need to do anything. So I could make another code file, sample.py, save it in that folder, and simply execute it using the command line terminal utility. And just like happened on Windows, it'll ask me my name, and then it says, hello, Ben, welcome to our first program. But there's another cool feature here that comes pre-installed. If you select Python inside of your finders, you'll see idle. And idle is a graphic user interface that you can use to work with Python. The text on this is probably a little bit small to see, but essentially you're given a prompt, sort of like the terminal window we were just looking at, and you could type Python code right into this. And as you type that code, when you hit enter after typing in the name, it immediately executes. So here I am in interactive mode, so now it's asking me this line of code, name equals raw input, is the part of the code that asks for my name, and so I type it and I answer it. Now I can do the second part. Hit enter on that, and it says, hello, Ben, welcome to our first program, because I typed in Ben as my name. Notice also that this code, this Python code, looks a little bit different than the code I was just using on Windows, and that's because on Windows, I downloaded and installed Python 3. This is Python 2. Python 2 and 3 have differences. They are technically different programming languages, and they share a lot of features in common, and a lot of syntax, and a lot of rules, but a different version of a programming language is effectively a different language, and has its own rules and its own syntax as well that's separated from that previous iteration. So you need to know not just what programming language you're working in when you're coding, but what version of the programming language you're working in. Hopefully this gives you some really good ideas about how you can sit down at your computer and get started writing some programs. You are more than welcome to take the code that I just showed you in this nugget and play around with it some. Try to mess it up and break it and then fix it again, maybe see how it works that way. Or look up some samples in other languages and how you produce the same thing, which is known as a Hello World program, a very common entry point for learning a new language. I hope that... So give that a spin, take it for a whirl, and see how you like it. I hope this has been informative for you, and I'd like to thank you for viewing.